Practice test number one. Section one, listening comprehension. In this section of the test, you will demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section with different directions for each part. Answer all the questions according to what the speakers say or imply. When you take the actual TOEFL test, you will not be allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Try to work on this sample test in the same way. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear two people having short conversations. After each conversation, you will hear a question. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers and choose the best answer. Then, on one of the answer sheets at the back of this book, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Listen to an example. On the recording you hear, Let's go for a walk in the park, Jim. I'd love to, but I'm beat. What does the man say? In your book you read, A. He is too tired to walk in the park. B. He agrees to go walking in the park with her. C. He is not Jim. His name is Pete. D. He doesn't know what to do. You learn from the conversation that the man is beat, an idiomatic expression meaning very tired. Therefore, the best answer to the question, what does the man say, is A. Question number one. You've got a wonderful apartment. That's what you're saying now, but you should have seen it when we moved in. What does the woman imply about the apartment? Question number two. I was calling about the job application I submitted on Monday. Yes. Well, I'm sorry. We're looking for someone with more experience. What did the man say? Question number three. If anyone calls for me, tell them I'm not in. Even if it's your mother? What does the woman imply? Question number four. The soccer game was rained out today. Well, I'm not much for watching sports anyway. What does the man mean? Question number five. If you want to buy beer, you'll need to prove that you're 21. I guess I must look younger than I am. What does the woman say about her appearance? Question number six. You really can't throw very well. I don't think you can be on the team unless you improve. I'm afraid I'm very bad at playing sports. What describes the man? Question number seven. Look, the pond is frozen. It's perfect weather for skating. I want to go right now. Don't you think it's a bad idea to go alone? What would the woman suggest? Question number eight. Isn't this place a good value? Unfortunately, they don't bring you your food when it's hot. Where did this conversation take place? Question number nine. Say, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Last semester we both took European history. Don't you remember? What does the woman mean? Question 
Question number 10. Jeremy loves to play soccer, so I had his brother go to a store in the suburbs and get him this great soccer ball. That's great. Do you think Jeremy will let me borrow it sometime? Whom is the soccer ball for? Question number 11. I would have called if I had thought it would help. Oh well, thanks anyway for thinking of us. What does the woman say about the man's call? Question number 12. Watch out for that low overpass. I see it. We can clear it, no problem. Where does this conversation probably take place? Question number 13. I'm so unhappy with my test results. Well, I'm not exactly dissatisfied with mine. And anyway, there's always next time. What does the man say about his test results? Question number 14. Did you see that bird fly right past us? No. I was having enough trouble just walking down the trail. Where does this conversation probably take place? Question number 15. How was your trip to the state park? What a great place! What does the woman say about her trip? Question number 16. Did you find it expensive to vacation in Europe? Not really. Once you get to know it, you learn how to save money. What does the man mean? Question number 17. Chris has a really neat car, doesn't she? Are you kidding? I'd die for a car like that. What does the woman mean? Question number 18. I don't like it when Joe puts ketchup on his steak. Why? What does the man want to know? Question number 19. I got a great deal on these books. Yes, I believe this one has been out of print for years. What does the woman mean? Question number 20. Do you think I could borrow $10 until Thursday? Why not? It's no big deal. What does the man say about the money? Question number 21. These are the most extensive notes I've ever seen. I know. I had Sally take them for me. What does the woman mean? Question number 22. That's the best beef we've ever had in the dining hall. Isn't it, though? What does the man imply? Question number 23. That's a great sweater. Did it take you long to make it? I can't knit a thing. I had it made for me. What does the woman say about the sweater? Question number 24. How was your date with Kelly last night? Well, let me say I've had worse. What does the man think about the date?
Question number 25. Excuse me, but why are these things just standing in the middle of the floor? This pair of lamps goes over there, up against the wall. What are the man and woman discussing? Question number 26. Were you finally able to get into that calculus class? Yeah, much to my regret. What does the man mean? Question number 27. I brought over a little something for you to eat. A little something? You brought the whole farm. What does the woman imply? Question number 28. Hey, you can't leave your car in that spot. The lot's closed. Oh, come on. How about if I pay you double? Where does the conversation take place? Question number 29. Well, to be or not to be, that's the question. Yeah, thanks, Shakespeare. How does the woman feel about the man? Question number 30. What's the matter with you lately? You look terrible. Oh, nothing much. I'm just a little homesick. What is wrong with the man?